genuinely think they wouldn't do that to you? You think you were the Tejadas are on some homies for life type shit? <laughs> when have you ever been able to trust them, Tariq? Well, with what we're doing, you can't count on trust or loyalty. Doesn't matter who it is. And you should know about that more than anyone. Loyalty and trust. Two words in the power universe which not many people have. And Effie made a really good point when she was speaking to Tariq. Tariq should have known better than anyone, because standing in front of him was someone who went behind his back no less than three times. Also taking it back to power which we're going to go through in a lot more detail in this breakdown, he was also manipulated by Slim. So, Effie really did hit the nail on the head. How could Tariq not see this betrayal coming? It really was a huge mistake on Tariq's part, especially because of the amount of times he's been betrayed, manipulated and lied to. So, in this breakdown, we're actually going to highlight some of Tariq's weaknesses and his deficiencies. Even though I know a lot are rooting for Tariq to come out on top, and where we've seen him make a lot of smart moves, he does have a lot of vulnerabilities and weaknesses. In 402, he stood here and said he was supposed to be better and smarter than everyone, but the fact is, he isn't, because if he was, he would have seen this coming, and he would have been able to solve this problem before it became a problem. But, I also believe all of this will come to the forefront when he has this hallucination scene, and when he does, I think we're going to be in for a major shift. Now having said that, I'm also going to run through some of the chess moves that he's been playing very well, and how he might just be able to checkmate Noma, potentially even using something he would have learned from Slim, aka Kanan. But, there's definitely a lot to unpack, and so firstly, I want to take it back to something Tariq mentioned in Season 3. You see, that she was the fucking mastermind behind all of this shit. She had everything figured out. It was my dad that fucked everything up. Alright, but I'm not like my dad, I'm smarter than him, I'm better than him, I think. There was a moment where Tariq was sat with Effie in this Italian restaurant, and you could tell from this conversation very early on, he never really wanted to be a regular civilian. He literally just pulled the trigger on someone in the street, which was the Russian connect, but quite the opposite to Brayden, he was calm, and he was now talking about money that they could make in the drug game if him and Effie played their cards right. He saw the money and power that comes with it, and in his words, he thought he was smarter and better than Ghost. He thought Tasha was the mastermind behind this whole operation, which is actually crazy, but from his perspective and what he saw, he was always going to be biased towards his moms, especially because of the hatred he had for Ghost. We've all seen how he's been in denial pretty much for the entirety of Power Book 2 Ghost, but with each passing moment, he definitely is proving he's his father's son. But he's still far from the complete package, and he is going to make a lot of mistakes, as did Ghost. He wasn't perfect either, far from it. There were a lot of moments where Ghost dropped the ball and landed himself in hot bother, like leaving his fingerprints on Greg Knox's window. But, I'm sure we can all comfortably say, Ghost was a very smart, strategic, calculated, strong and determined individual, who was able to go toe to toe with the biggest and baddest, not just in the street, but also in the boardroom. Like Zion said, he knew how to solve a problem before it became a problem. And I'm glad we've actually got characters like Zion and even Tasha setting Tariq straight about who Ghost was, how his name St. Patrick still holds a lot of weight in these streets because of Ghost, for example. The only reason why he was able to get this meeting was because of his surname, something which I personally think they should have done a long time ago in season 1. Respectfully, I don't know who my father was. Now the funny thing about Tariq saying respectfully he didn't know who his father was, is that he didn't know who Ghost was either, because if you knew who your father was, maybe you wouldn't be in this absolute mess that you find yourself in. And one of the messy situations is Salim, and the hell of a lot of bodies that he's been dropping in season 4, which I fear might eventually come back to haunt him. Right at the start of season 4, we all saw him take care of Junior. He killed a cop, something Ghost was always against, and since then, he's had Carter on his back, which is another problem entirely. But, he did get away with the Junior kill, for now anyway, but the Salim one, that was a huge mistake, and I think in the moment, he knew it too. It was a very messy kill, which stemmed from him taunting Salim, just like Ghost once did with Dre. So I'm gonna save you. Like the helpless little bitch you are. See how easy that was? For you to bitch up? Again, very similar to his father, father like son. But as I mentioned before, a lot of blood is being spilt by Tariq St. Patrick in season 4, and this one in particular was sloppy and messy. We can also take it one step further and say, considering Tariq shot Salim, he should have made sure he finished the job just like he did with the Russian. Like we heard Roxane in Raising Kanan, two to the chest and one to the head. Make sure they have no chance, because we've seen Stranger Things in the Power Universe, although I do think Salim is out of here anyway, but he should have definitely made sure, especially because in Power, you just never know. Now he also followed it up by breaking into Salim's parents' house, all because he wanted to protect the Tasha secret, 
which is one of his biggest weaknesses. Anything to do with Tasha, he's gonna drop everything to deal with it, just like his operation he was supposed to set up with Brayden. And then we all saw how Brayden pillow talked to Elle, something that will no doubt have consequences of its own, but also backfiring on Tariq. Now on the flip side, when it came to Brayden wanting to be there for Rebecca and his family, Tariq really didn't give a shit. He basically said it is what it is and they had bigger fish to fry. In a way, it was actually pretty selfish from Tariq, another trait he seems to have picked up from Ghost, at least from the later seasons of Power. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if one of these deaths do come back and haunt him, whether it be Junior, Salim, or someone else he drops from now until the end of the season. Carter seems like he's hell-bent on catching Tariq by any means necessary, and with sloppy kills like this one, one of these days it is going to come back to bite him. I can even see a scenario playing out where he believes he's reached the pinnacle of the game, where he's taken out Noma. The Tahadas are no longer a problem, he's got all this power and control in the street, everything he desired is in the palm of his hands, but that's the moment where he gets a cuff slapped on his wrist for one of his murders, or even frame for something someone else has done. Carter isn't messing around this season, and he's definitely coming for blood. One way or another, he said he was going to catch Tariq, and usually, if someone else said it like Jenny Sullivan, Blanca Rodriguez, or Cooper Sacks, I used to sit back and just laugh, because there was no way they were going to catch Tariq. Watching on from the audience perspective, I used to think, yeah, good luck with catching a St. Patrick, but with Carter, I really do feel like he is a different proposition. He's different for more reasons than one. There's definitely a hidden agenda with him for sure, which I did touch on in my breakdown for episode 4, but something I'll definitely come to again at some point this week. So, let's see whether one of these sloppy murders do come back to haunt Tariq. I definitely think if he continues playing this dangerous game, then sooner or later, Carter will be there to hold him accountable. Now in terms of a couple of chess moves that Tariq has played very well, and are still somewhat in motion, is with the use of Davis McLean and Anya Covington. And now what I'm worried about is making sure Noma doesn't find out what the fuck we have going on. I think you could be a big help in that and get paid while you're back. With Davis, the question is always there around what's his real intention, whose side is he really on, but I think Tariq has him perfectly positioned, right where he wants him. He told him that he had a plan where he'd also get paid at the same time, because he knows what makes Davis tick, he knows what makes him play ball. So, Davis helping Nomar is a move which was actually orchestrated by Tariq, and it is a very clever chess move. If you're talking about how to be one step ahead of your opponents, solving a problem before it becomes a problem is by having information or someone on the inside that can help. For example, Davis now knows one of Nomar's legit businesses is a jet parts company, and how she was also looking for some government contracts with the help of Wiley Adams. If Davis lets Tariq know, maybe he can make a call to a congressman he knows, Rashad Tate, and could he have power and influence to maybe cause some problems for Noma? They have mentioned Rashad Tate's name a few times, and I do think he will show up at some point when Tariq needs someone of his influence, or something happens with his brother. But Davis knowing this type of information, which he might be feeding back to Tariq, isn't such a bad idea. However, just circling back to the very beginning of this video, I hope Tariq has learned his lesson and taken Effie's advice on board. Even though Davis is team Tariq at this moment in time, there is no such thing as trust and loyalty in the game that they're in. So, let's see if Tariq has learned his lesson, because if he hasn't, then what more can you say? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Leave Anya alone. We don't need Noma coming around here sniffing shit out. Now on Anya Covington, this is definitely Tariq's next move. Right at the end of 404, as he sat there having a smoke after having a very long day, out of the corner of his eye, he saw Anya, and then he made his move. We all know they're going to get pretty close over the next episode or two, and this is where Tariq really will start to turn the screw like Kanan once did in power. See, he, he ain't trying to outrun the cop. He just figured as long as he can outrun me and Tommy, the cops will settle for us. Always think about himself. Ever since Kanan met Tariq, he was poisoning his mind about what his father was like from back in the day. He was spilling secrets, whether they were true or whether Kanan was lying about some, who knows. But this is something that I fully expect Tariq to take advantage of, and very similar to how Kanan once manipulated him on power. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tariq do the same with Anya. He definitely knows, Anya is Noma's weakness, and he also knows information that could completely tear their relationship apart. We already know their relationship is pretty fragile, where Anya is questioning who her mother really is, and with Tariq having gone through something very similar with Ghost, he can really play on this and start to turn the screw like Kanan did with him back in Season 3. It's a chess move that just makes sense. Start to throw Noma off balance by revealing to Anya that Noma's a drug dealer or the reason why her father is dead is because of her mom's. However, 
we also have to look at the other perspective. Could it also backfire? I think if Tariq goes ahead and uses Anya like Kanan once did with him, then not only could Nomar rumble their underground operation, like Brayden warned, but Nomar will try and target someone that Tariq cares about in retaliation. And we all know who that one person is. We spoke about her before, Tariq's biggest weakness, Tasha. 100% she's going to come back into the picture at some point, because Nomar even mentioned in 401, find a weakness of Tariq's. And so, if Tariq goes after Anya and starts to ruin their relationship, you can bet she's going to try and do the same. She's going to go after Tasha. Whether that then brings Tommy into the fold, who knows. He said this war wasn't his, but if Tasha is in danger, I do think he'll feel like he might need to get involved. And I feel we might have even got a hint with one of the lyrics from the Stansfield group, Tommy's coming for the win. Bit of a strange lyric, don't you think? But if Tommy is to come back, then best believe, it is because Tariq and his family are in huge danger. So let's see. Let's see if Tariq will need Tommy's help at some point. But that's a breakdown of where we are with Tariq in terms of a couple of moves which might come back to haunt him, but also some chess moves that he's got in motion, and what he could have planned going forward. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Has Tariq learned his lesson, and will he manage to get a grip of this situation, or will one of these situations come back and haunt him? Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.